Hi guys. It is May 24, 2019. Alright, I have two articles that are uh, revealing the concern of Lake Oroville, Oroville Dam, not coming out of just ordinary Americans, but district supervisors in Northern California. And I want to start this video by saying all of you in that area who have been trashed as just crazy and hysterical and you don't believe Department of Water Resources, well, they just lied to you two years ago, but that doesn't mean they're lying now. Um, uh, you know, you've been called conspiracy theorists, you've been called, you know, oh, you're just going on social media and getting information, but you're not listening to the experts. Actually, you are listening to the experts. The experts like Scott Cahill, who are telling you there are um, a whole lot of problems with that dam. Oh, but those aren't the experts who are recognized by, you know, little papers like Oroville Mercury Register. They come out with an editorial that was so degrading of all of you there. And, yeah, I did say you should shut that paper down. Interesting is this now, Butte County concerned over lake levels. And I hope I'm remembering this correctly, but a subscriber who lives in Chico said that this, this publication is owned by, the say, it has the same owners as Oroville Mercury Register. Well, <laughs> um, they're contradicting, uh, they're contradicting themselves. Um, Butte County Concern. This is from the Enterprise Record. Okay. There are more concerns over lake levels in Oroville as Butte County leaders take initiative to explore alternative options for safety measures. I will link below to everything. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but here I'm very concerned about the lake levels. District 1 Supervisor Bill Connolly said Tuesday during a board supervisors meeting, board of supervisors. Uh, Lake Oroville is being run in an antiquated and linear manner. Department of Water Resources priority seems to be water delivery instead of public safety. We need to move into the next century. Climate, oh, it's so hard reading this. Climate change is real. All right, we've had warm rain on snow before and if we had warm rain on snow right now, it would be one of the worst disasters in the history in the state. And you can read more information. They talk about forecast based operations, which Folsom Lake is uh, how they operate that reservoir. Um, but what I want to read is here it behooves us to write a letter to Department of Water Resources to point out they need to move into the next century. Connolly said, I hope you would support me in writing a letter to them suggesting they put public safety over water delivery. When we go to a meeting with them, they say they can't do this because of the cost. Well, uh, that's the first I'm hearing of that. They just, Aaron Mellon, that um, spokesperson for Department of Water Resources coming out, just saying everything is safe and we are in accordance with the uh, Army Corps of Engineers. Um, uh, plan and or design operation <laughs> as if the Army Corps of Engineers has not made repeated mistakes. Look at Houston. Look at those reservoirs. It wasn't just that they released the reservoirs in Houston. That was the Harvey um, disaster. Their release of those reservoirs flooded out thousands of homes. Read the articles regarding the construction of those reservoirs and who was responsible? The Army Corps of Engineers. So you can't, you cannot trust any of these agencies anymore. Um, so District 2 Supervisor Deborah Lucero praised Connolly's comments, saying she absolutely agrees, and District 4 Supervisor Steve Lampert 
also agreed with Connolly. So you, now you have three district supervisors in Northern California who are concerned about the Oroville Dam, Lake Oroville, the water is rising, and you were trashed just a few days ago by a publication that the owner is the same owner as this publication. I could, I'm not feeling too confident in saying that, but I think I got it right. It's my responsibility to report to you that the Department of Water Resource has gone off track. Okay. Here's the numbers. I don't get it. It's still at 891. Now, in my looking at this table of numbers for weeks, the lake level has been steadily, steadily, steadily rising. Suddenly, it stopped a few days ago. It stopped rising and held steady for hours and hours and hours. And then it went down. And I think now it's back up, but it's 891 feet, 891 and a half feet. But look at the outflow versus the inflow numbers. There's more inflow than outflow. And I find it interesting that it's still at 891. The outflow, let's look at uh, just a few hours ago. 8,845, inflow 2,022, uh, 10,000, sorry, 874, 3, <laughs> and 10,960. So you've got more inflow than outflow, and it seems odd that this is the increased numbers. You cannot trust the Department of Water Resources at all, and your district supervisors are essentially telling you the same thing. You cannot trust Department of Water Resources and what they are doing. And I do want to point out that I find it interesting here where um, Connolly added that the Department of Water Resource spends too much time and resources elsewhere, including repairing a federal levy in Sutter County and other projects in Yuba County. Wow. All right. Um, I, in a video a couple of days ago, showed a map of the Northern California mega region, a detailed map. And as far north as it went, Cuba City, Yuba City. Oroville is north of Yuba City. So when I came across that, look, I've been saying for years <laughs> that they are destroying the infrastructure all over the country. The infrastructure destroyed in the mega region it's to bring about the new infrastructure of the smart city, the infrastructure destroyed outside of mega regions will just be left destroyed. When I came across Yuba County I just thought okay great so they're spending time and energy within the mega region but not outside the mega region Oregon. The area north of Yuba City is just the forgotten area. I'm sorry to say that to all of you. Um, so here's another article. NorCal reservoirs approach cap cap capacity with more rain and snow in the forecast. At the beginning of May, Northern California reservoirs were already sitting at historic levels. They came, then came the unexpected stormy weather that saw a historic rain in the valley and almost two feet of snow in the mountains. Now, as the major lakes in NorCal approach capacity, the question remains, where will all of this water go? As of May 22nd, the four main major NorCal reservoirs sit at or above 95% capacity, a sharp rise of 4% in just two weeks. Look at this. 
These are the reservoirs, Shasta, Trinity, Oroville, Folsom, uh, Mellow, Mel Onis. Um, they're all above. Here, 97% capacity. Uh, Shasta Lake, Trinity, 97. Lake Oroville, 96. Folsom, 95. Where is all of this water going to go? Well, it's, yeah, very concerning because here is um, a tweet sent to me by a subscriber. CN CNRFC forecasters humans finally seeing significant snowmelt and precipitation from Feather River above Indian Falls. Forecast shows significant peak flows Monday through Tuesday. An odd forecast of 20,000 cubic feet per second out of Oroville Dam. Either they know something or secret leak under Gatehouse is big. Okay, they're going to increase the outflow uh, up to 20,000. So when was the... Uh, when did they open the spillway, the gates? Oh, I can't remember. February, March of this year, but they stopped at 13,000 cubic feet per second. And everybody was like, okay, why'd you stop? And then, because you saw all of the crew and the equipment on the spillway, and the leaks, evidence of the leaks, and the buckling of the slabs, or not sure if I got the language quite right, but a lot were speculating that at 13,000, that spillway uh, couldn't handle it. They stopped. So now they're going to increase to 20,000 cubic uh, feet per second. So, well, one could say they repaired what they needed to repair. They got it. Now they're going to start releasing more waters. But yes, you all are sitting on edge because you can't get the information necessary to figure out what you should be doing. But now you have district supervisors coming out and saying, Department of Water Resources, uh, they actually even said that we shouldn't even be obligated to them. Um, that Let me see where it is. Um, here, we should have staff look at limiting our obligations with Department of Water Resources and what we originally agreed to. So, Department of Water Resources is saying that, yeah, well, we may need to use the main spillway. Um, uh, we, we, we will let the public and media know if this is necessary. Why? You know, look, you guys, how long did you have to evacuate two years ago? How long? How long did they give you? Department of Water Resources lied to you then. You should not believe liars. <laughs> you know, how do you get that across to Americans? Don't believe liars. And virtually every government official lies. What, what are we doing here? We are part of the uh, manifestation of just an utter nightmare. But it pisses me off for you guys because you're stuck with, okay, now we have people who, who the Department of Water Resources and their experts telling you it's safe. Now you have an awful lot of experts telling you it's not safe, like Scott Cahill. You've got your district supervisors coming out and saying something's very wrong with the Department of Water Resources. Now they're going to be starting to release far more waters. And I guess it's going to start Monday, Tuesday. All right, well, you need to just take in all that. That's the unfortunate reality of life today. You just need to take in as much information as you possibly can, assess the situation, and discern for yourself should I go or should I stay? Fires. Fire at Big Bend National Park causes structural damage. 
All right, I point this out because these fires, they're saying that, oh, get ready for the fires this year. And who did they blame? All of us, the two-legged. We're responsible for all these fires. I, just like what we have been seeing throughout the years, the damage to infrastructure, the taking in of donations that never go to the victims of disasters, but seem to go to the new infrastructure of the smart cities. I have videos that was very plain, very clear after Harvey in Houston. And Houston, the Texas Triangle is uh, one of the mega regions that is far advanced. But, you know, even the national parks, we see the federal government doing their land grabs. Trump just did a massive land grab. Obama was doing land grabs. And Clinton and Bush, they've all been increasing the amount of land from states saying, too bad, we're designating this as a national monument, which means you can't do anything on that land. Oh, but we can allow, we can allow companies to mine, which Trump has been doing. The public can't, you know, use it. They're restricted, but not companies, mining companies. Um, if, if anybody could possibly think that we're a free country, you know, that we're the country that was established, it, it's mind-boggling, mind-boggling, because we have been a fascist government for decades. The corporate takeover that we were talking about in the 70s and the 80s, it's 2019, corporations rule. So Big Ben suffered major loss last evening as a wildfire destroyed La Harmonia store, visitor center, building, uh, the building, restrooms, uh, damaged one of the historic homes. So here, the fire jumped across the Rio. Fires now jump across rivers. They jump across highways like this fire in Jacksonville, Florida, that's still ongoing, only 30% contained. But getting back to the Big Ben, when you read these articles on the fires, you will hear somebody say uh, it's because of humans. You know, it's, hey, get rid of the human. We won't have wildfires anymore. Um, but how do these fires jump? If you hit them with frequencies, which is energy, Voila, they jump. So now people are restricted. Restricted, uh, and they're saying it's emergency vehicles and equipment, but the restrictions last, and some restrictions. If, if you didn't know what was going on years ago, they were literally ripping up roads, the asphalt or cement roads in national parks, leaving them dirt. Why are they doing that? Because they're pushing people out of these areas. So the fire in Jacksonville, Florida, 450 acres, which it seems to, that number has stayed the same for 24 hours, okay? It's 30% contained. The, I mean, Jacksonville, Florida, into State 95. I think that's the only way to get out of that area of Florida. I might be wrong, but Interstate 95 was closed down for nine, 19 hours, um, seven miles. That's enough to cause bumper to bumper. You're just sitting there. And the articles that I was reading last night, people were getting out of their cars to walk their dogs. They were just sitting there. Um, Georgia opened up one of their highways, allowing, uh, I don't know, it was a mess. It was a mess. 
Well, apparently they opened the interstate back up. Uh, but here, it jumped the highway into a wilderness area. And that wilderness, most of which is considered to be marsh and swamplands, well, it's not wet enough to keep the, from catching fire. It's the hot, dry sun, the low humidity. It's curing under the sun. So the surface is dry on the top, allowing, well, it's fuel for this fire. Do you understand that they have the technology to cause one area to be extremely humid, like Anderson, South Carolina today, and another area they can take out that humidity? What do they say here? Well, the governor is saying, I encourage everyone impacted to remain vigilant and need all instructions from law enforcement. And a Florida Forest Service spokeswoman, Annalisa Winter, the fires appeared to have started near the train tracks that run parallel to Main Street. It could have been something thrown out of the train. It could have been exhaust. Uh, sometimes it is the catalytic converter. Sometimes it's the friction from the brakes. This time of year, we are going to see more human caused fires, but people need to be very careful because, well, I guess that area always had a fire because a train was going through that area. Oh, no, that's not the case. Oh, the case is because it's climate change now. Uh, and humans, you know, forget about it. You just, you cause flood, you cause fires, uh, you cause tornadoes, you breathe and drive a car. The abject insanity of what Americans are listening to and not questioning is, uh, uh, well, it's very, uh, you, can't, you just can't comprehend it. But they are saying, we're going to have more fires this year. So get ready, guys. Get ready. And you guys in Oroville, I, I can only just say I am so sorry you are having to deal with this. Look at the microwaves. Look at the microwaves right here, the corner of this picture. So this is a satellite image or a picture from high above, and this is cloud. Well, you got the microwaves. All right, um, proving that something, well, frequencies is happening, guys, and this is not your normal cloud. So I'm just sorry, you know, that you are being trashed publicly by your Oroville Mercury Register, um, trashed by other people. And yet now you have confirmation that you are actually right on target with how you are thinking and your questioning, questioning the Department of Water Resources. Continue to do it, take in the information, and decide what you're going to do. What a world we are living in. All links are below.